Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Jonathan Sellers. And I'm Danielle Percival. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Sports. Well, how do you follow up an exciting overtime victory at home? Apparently you go on the road and do it again. Saturday afternoon, the men's basketball team won 71-64 against ULM, giving them back-to-back -back overtime victories. Emil Jones hit the game-tying three in Thursday's game, but this time it was the opposing team who knocked down a three to tie it and send it to OT. But again, Emil Jones came through big, outscoring the Warhawks 8-7 alone in overtime. It was a true team effort, though, as everyone who played for the Trojans in the game scored. Troy has now played in four overtime games, including one double OT, and has split those games. Coach Don Maestri said his team did what they had to in order to get the victory. We kind of lost the lead at the end of the game. We shouldn't have done that, but we did do a great job in overtime, control the overtime. We, um, uh, uh, Emil Jones made some clutch big-time shots, and then we made all of our free throws in overtime from uh, Hunter, Williams, and uh, Emil, and somebody, oh, Josh Warren made two of the biggest free throws in his life. I don't know if he's ever made a free throw in his life, but he made these two, and it helped us win that game. On Thursday night, though, the luck ran out. The Trojans lost to Western Kentucky 65-61 on the road. Troy was up by as many as eight in the first half, but got down by that same number before the break. The standout for the Trojans was Hunter Williams, who scored a career-high 23 points. The Trojans' record is now 9-13. The women's basketball team has battled and fought and scrapped, but just can't seem to find a way to get in the win column. Losers of eight straight, the Trojans were on the road in Monroe on Saturday looking to stop their skid. The Trojans erased a 15-point halftime deficit against the Warhawks, but fell 79-74. ULM out-rebounded the Trojans by 16. Joanna Harden had 28 in the loss, with Ashley Beverly Kelly chipping in 20. Thursday night, Troy was in Western Kentucky and dropped their 10th in a row, 98-80. to The Hilltoppers led by only five at the half, but were able to pull away in the second. Five Trojans were in double figures, led by Jasmine Pitts, who had 19 points and eight assists. The Troy women's indoor track and field team traveled to Jonesboro to compete in the Arkansas Invitational last Friday. Joe Courtney Alexander finished second in the 400-meter dash with a time of 58.35 seconds. The Trojans had two teams competing in the 4x400-meter relay race, but only one had a top three finish. The relay team comprised of seniors Joe Courtney Alexander and Candace Vaughn, and freshman Eliza Kempton and Paige McMillan scored third with a time of 4 minutes and 11 seconds. In the 3,000-meter race, Julia Ostendorf moved into third all-time at Troy with a time of 10 minutes, 32.32 seconds. Director of Track and Field Jill Lancaster says she's proud of her team's performance and the progress they are making. We're making big improvements because coming off a four-week vacation, you know, we can only feed them so much information when they're away from us. So we're able to uh, insert some workouts here the past few weeks that brought us to another level at Arkansas State uh, from our first meet. But by no way, like you said, are we where we need to be, but we have saw a lot of progress this week, and we call it dancing on the table. You start dancing on the table when you're ready for a breakthrough to a new level, and we're starting to see some of that, and they're starting to feel good about what's going on. Last season, expectations were high for the baseball team. They were picked near the top of the league and projected to be in a regional. But the team struggled to get things going and for the first time under Bobby Pierce finished below 500. But this year is a new year with some new faces and another tough schedule. Justin McNelly has the story. Coming off a disappointing 2012 campaign, the Trojan baseball team is getting things underway to prepare for the upcoming season. And head coach Bobby Pierce is optimistic of his team. Well, we think we've got a really good ball club again this year. Um, very excited about our team because they show us all the things you want to see at this particular time and going back to the fall. A major concern heading into this season is the pitching staff due to the fact that last year's team was plagued with injuries to four of its main pitchers. But Pierce is confident his pitching staff for 2013 will be strong even with the loss of all-star Tyler Ray. Oh, I think this staff is... Uh, Finally getting into a position where they know they can lead the team. Uh, they know they've got good defenders behind them. They know they've got an offense that can score some runs for them. Uh, we're not a power pitching staff. We're a pitchability staff. With all the big games on the schedule for the Trojans this year, one non-conference weekend really stands out in Pierce's mind. The weekend I'm looking forward to because I don't look too much forward is the second weekend in Orlando where we play Texas Tech, UConn, and Central Florida. Uh, I think that's going to be 
kind of the weekend that tells us a little bit really where we are uh, and what we need to improve moving forward. Justin McNelly, Trojan Sports Now. And the season opens February 15th at Riddle Pace Field as Troy faces Florida A&M. And it's not just the boys that will be hitting the diamond. The softball team has begun practicing for their season, and Courtney Addison has a preview of what the Trojans will be bringing to the table. The Troy softball team now has two full weeks of practice under its belt in preparation of the 2013 season. The Trojans finished last season with an overall record of 31-24. and 24. However, Troy will need to bounce back from a record of 10-14 and 14 in the Sunbelt Conference. But despite losing six starters from last year's roster, head coach Melanie Davis says she has full confidence in this year's lineup. So, you know, we're going to be very young out there, but we think we have some good young talent. Uh, they're working really hard to, uh, to step up. They're really excited to find out about what Division I softball is uh, in the Southeast and, you know, in the Sun Belt Conference. Nine players will wear a Troy jersey for the first time this season, and eight of those are true freshmen. The coaching staff has high expectation for the rookies. You know, I could call out – any other number of those young players, I think you're going to see them doing some big things for us uh, infield, outfield, uh, on the base paths, paths, and in the batter's box. Position starters may be very young for the Trojans, but all of last year's pitching staff will be returning, and two new players will be welcomed into the bullpen. One true freshman out of Alabaster and one transfer from Gulf Coast Community College. Coach Davis also added that she will rely heavily on the maturity of her pitching staff. Troy will have four seniors on this season's roster. Those players, along with a few others, will be looked towards for leadership on the field. Caitlin Ortiz will be at first base. Bailey Blake will be at shortstop. Hannah Wren will be behind the plate part of the time uh, and DPing part of the time. Her partner in crime, so to speak, will be sharing the time behind the plate with Casey McAllister, who's a junior returning, as well as Taylor Smart, who's a returning junior. And I think, you know, among those four to five players there, there'll be enough good leadership and good uh, experience that will help uh, lead this young squad. Motivation and staying focused during practice is something Coach Davis feels is key this time of year. But she says her team is excited and ready to get the season started. We're ready to go play. You know, we're about tired of beating up on one another and facing our own pitchers. We're ready to go out and try to attack some opposing pitchers and opposing hitters. Um, so I think the, the biggest thing is to just try to stay, uh, stay focused for the next couple weeks because we have a lot of things we need to prepare in order to be ready when we go and open up at Mississippi State. Courtney Addison, Trojan Sports Now. We've been talking about sports that are just getting started with practice, but for some athletes, they aren't practicing to get on the field for Troy any longer. Some of them are looking to move on to the next level. Take Chip Reeves, for example. He's probably most recognizable for his grill. We've almost all seen it, but that's not the only thing flashy about Reeves. He's also known for doing this. Robinson has southward with him. Here's the deep snap from Wilborn. Robinson wants to go downfield, looks for Chip Reeves against single coverage, makes a leaping grab at the one-yard line. Amazing. It doesn't take long to tell that Chip Reeves is a skilled player. The folks at the Raycom College Football All-Star Classic knew, and that's why he was selected to join players from across the nation. I mean, I feel like it's an honor because, you know, uh, we, that means we are the best players in the country, you know, uh, and for me to get selected to play against, you know, the best players in the country, that means it made me feel like I'm good, you know, it made me feel like everything I work for, you know, happening for me. Reeves was a member of the Troy team in 2009 and 2010 before leaving for one season. He said Coach Larry Blakeney and his staff helped him return to the field and become a better player. I kind of struggled a little bit before I came back, uh, which you know me having been out of school for a year and then having to return back. You know, they kind of took me under their wing and told me, you know, it's time to grow up. We know you, we know you can't play football. Now you need to just get, get back on the horse and go handle your business. I feel like everything they told me came true, and I, I now get, I give them the credit. In 2012, Reeves led the Sun Belt with 87.5 yards per game. He was also the only player in the Sun Belt to have five 100-yard receiving games this season. I had a lot of people pulling for me, but I just didn't know it at the time. So, I mean, it feels good to be here doing exactly what they told me I can do. As long as I do exactly what they tell me to do, which is the right thing, and it all work out. Currently, Reeves is preparing for Pro Day, which will be on March 4th. And Coach Hunsey got me as soon as I got back to Troy, and he put weight on me, got me faster, got me everything I needed to be in order to be a pro. You know, so that's what I'm going um, to finish out my workout with for the rest of until I get ready to do my pro day.
Trojan Sports now.